Hey, how y'all doing? Hope uh, hope the audio is lined up almost. Uh, great to be back. Happy to be doing another live stream. And thank you for the shout outs on No BSTS. That has been a blast, actually. That's been really fun. And it's good to get a lot of great feedback on that. And, and I'm excited it's going to keep going uh, next week. It's going to be pretty much all React from tip to tail. Uh, we're going to go over properties and uh, all kinds of great stuff. We're going to do generic components, which is really cool. Um, and then I think next week we'll probably get into a little bit of state management, do some context, and then uh, take a look at Redux Toolkit, which is something that I haven't looked at. I've looked at Redux, but I haven't looked at Redux Toolkit. Um, so that's going to be pretty exciting, but I love that today it's all about the stuff that you folks have come up with and sent to me in terms of the cool Pokemon viewer projects that you've got. There's some really neat stuff in here. There is uh, Svelte. I don't know if you all have done Svelte. There's that, which is really cool. There is um, Xstate, which is re really exciting to me because on the project that I'm currently doing, uh, we just started using Xstate, or I, you know, my part of it was to add in some Xstate stuff to monitor uh, audio and video and keep that all in sync and with the buffering and everything else that you have in an HTML con or in a, in a web context, uh, keeping up with that and keeping that all managed was pulling my hair out with just sort of basic uh, non-state based tooling. So yeah, all right. Great to have everybody here. I, you know, the number of people we get is, is awesome. So, okay, well, let's uh, take a look at some projects. So I put in here projects with uh, the person's name on our Discord server. So that'd be Cheesecake. This is Cheesecake's project. And then his GitHub name. So if you want to go and grab this code for yourself, if you like it, then, you know, or give, in this case, Cheesecake, some shout outs on GitHub, feel free to do that. So let us check this one out. So, okay. Hope the font size is okay for everybody. I'm, I've been juicing up the font size so people can see it. I mean, for me, it's like pfft, huge, but it's, it's cool. I'm good. All right, let's try this out. Hi, Ross. How you doing? It's so weird knowing that there is a 22 second delay between what I say and what, when you hear it. Whoa. Okay. That's a lot of, that's a lot of color. I like this one. Okay, cool. Look at this. Like, like cool dashes of color with the, with the pink here and the, and the, oh, I love that. That is really pretty little stretchy on these guys. You can tell that they're not quite aspect ratio locked, uh, but that's cool. And wow. Okay. Uh, this is kind of neat. Uh, very well done. All right. So this is basically a, a take on the off-the-shelf example code, uh, kind of reskinned a little bit. So, okay, very cool. And let's get, jump back in the code and see if there's anything to kind of talk about in there. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. My keyboard bindings. Jeez. Okay, there we go. Okay, cool. Uh, yep. <laughs> Okay, it's funny. I'm I'm like flipping back and forth between this screen brush thing that allows me to use the pen and, and make all kinds of cool markup, and I love that. Uh, but I'm just sort of still getting used to the um, the use of that. Okay, yeah. So we we got our our I think the custom hook that we created for the Pokemon. That's cool. Uh, that's a nice snag if you if you're into custom hooks. And I think you if you're doing React, I think that's a really good way to go. Um, let's see. So, oh, this is one of the things I really loved about Fower is, you know, we do a lot of stuff with class names and stuff where, you know, we'll do like CLSX and kind of join up a bunch of class names and it just doesn't read all that well. But I love that you can get like, you know, oh, look, it's very intuitive. You know, I white when it's selected, it's going to be white and, and a background rose color of 500. And then when it's, when it's not selected, it's going to have a border on it and that sort of stuff. So very clear, very easy to understand. And if we go back over to the app, let's see. Let's see, let's see that actually roll. Yeah, and it looks really nice too. 
So I just, I, I just love that, that style in Fowler. I think it's great. Hey, Sam, nice to meet you, and thanks for the hat tip. Appreciate that. That's great. Okay, anything else? Uh, so yeah, no, some, some good reskinning here. I like it. Very nice. Very well done. Okay. And as, you, as I, all of this stuff you can snag for free and, and kind of work on on your own. I think that's, it's great that we're, we've got this huge set of open source projects that you can uh, jump in on. Oh, actually, you know, come to think of it, um, I did want to ask you guys, um, or y'all, uh, after we do a lot of stuff on React, um, assuming that I don't do anything on Angular, because <laughs> honestly, I don't, I haven't done Angular in a while, and I'd probably like, look like a fool trying to teach Angular folks how to use TypeScript, since it's literally in their blood. Um, no BSTS is probably going to do more in the like the node space after that, um, getting into mono repos with NX and say, you know, sort of project and design, but that's going to end pretty quickly. And then it's a question of like what the no the next no BS topic would be. So uh, if you have an interest in putting out a no BS topic, uh, then you know put it into the channel. I'm all ears. I have one in mind, uh, but you know, I, and I. I think it would be maybe about a week's worth of content. So, I, but I'd love to hear what you think. Is it, is it no BS X state? Is it no BS, um, I don't know, you know, uh, web sockets. It could be all kinds of different things. Okay, hey Slayer, nice to see you. Uh, okay, so let's take a look at our next project. Thanks for that cheesecake. And let's jump back over into our, let's take a look at Boaz21. So it's Boaz21 on the Discord server, and but on GitHub, it's 7h und 34. Maybe a little bit of German thing going on there. Uh, no BSTS with specific state managers. There's so many to choose from. Uh, oh, no, I like it. Okay. Yeah, Node, definitely uh, underrated for sure. Uh, okay, so Boaz. I wonder if I should put up the comments like in the channel, like so that I, when I'm reacting to them, you can see me reacting to your comment like 22 seconds later. I know that a lot of streamers do that. In fact, I started to like watch a lot of streams myself just because I'm, I'm trying to keep up with all the, the, the Starship, Starbase, SN15 stuff, and like it's like a, a live stream every day with that. Okay, so what is Boaz got going on? Uh, let me see, okay. So it's, uh, it's a React app again. I think this is the one that's got xState in it. So that's, I think we can see that from the machine over here. Yeah, so that'll be cool to look at. So he's basically managing the, whoa, look at this, got, Filtering the Pokemon, so this is this is really cool. Okay, well, let's try it out. Let's uh, see how this looks in production. Let's give this a go. Oh, React. Sometimes you're slow on the uptake. There we go. Okay. Oops. Whoa, okay, wow, big, big and bold. I I gotta say, huge, huge fan of that style. I love that. I, I love that that kind of box. It's very iconic. That's great. Uh, nice use of, of differentiation on, on font size here. Gorgeous. Uh, let's try some, some filtering and see how that goes. See, there's some, some look and feel to that. Oh, okay, that's just me. Okay, let's uh, look for, okay, font size, a little bit different, little disparity there. You know, this, <laughs> given the font size of that versus like the font size of this guy, it would be nice to, you know, have those two font sizes remotely close. Um, oh, ooh, look at that. There you go. Ooh, Vite. Yes, actually. Um, it's interesting. I've been thinking a lot about, because I know we're going to get into Svelte, and like the the... The popularity curve of web frameworks is like, you know, React is like that. Um, Vue and Angular are kind of, you know, like that, sort of very similar. 
And then unfortunately, Svelte is just like, like very, not even, I'm, I'm giving it some credit there. Um, just so sad because honestly, when, when we get into Svelte, um, I think you're going to see it. Svelte is just amazing and it's so lightweight. Um, coming out of like an e-commerce background, to me, like the, the performance metrics of Svelte are just awesome. Um, okay, so yeah, this looks really good. Let's go take a look over that X state implementation and see if we can get anything out of that. So how is he doing this? So he's got a page provider. That's interesting. Where is that defined? Oops, that's the functioning component. Page provider. Oh, cool. Okay. Oh, check that out. So he's, he's passing. Okay, cool. So he's got a machine. And oh, nice. Okay. And so he's using a combination of X state and a provider, which is just, I think, a standard. Okay. So there's machine. Where's this guy? A page context. Cool. Okay. Uh, there you go. Oh, I see. That's the context. That's a little confusing because there's two, two different contexts here there's the uh, React context. And then there is the um, the rack notion of a context, and this may be actually using X state context. Mm, I don't, I, I didn't know that that was a thing. Oh wait, no, it, no, sorry, my bad. He actually is using create context here, so that's what it is. So we have a page context. It's either going to be the Pokemon page context, which is actually a thing in X state. So X state, um, if you're not familiar with it, it's actually so cool, but it, it deserves its honestly its own series probably its own book. I wonder if it has one, but let's, let's look at this. So we got this Pokemon page and you basically have a state machine, right? And the state states are, let's see, there's loading, there's idle and there's typing. So you, I'm seeing that like right here. So you got states and you got loading and you got idle and you got typing and you've got filtering and loading more. And so basically you have to be in one of those, those states. And I'm going to assume that we start probably in loading state. Yeah, let's take a look. Yes, we initially start with loading and then we do load Pokemons. And then when that's done, and you can see how declarative this is. It's so cool. It's so nice to be able to kind of track a complex flow just declaratively here. So once you're done with the load Pokemons, then you go to when you're done, you go to idle, right? And that's going to scoot you over to that state. Um, which is really nice. And then let's see. And then when we're typing, uh, when we get an event that says that we're typing, then we, then we move into the typing phase. Ooh, the, check that out. It's actually, oh, that's really cool. So this is actually, I think he's doing a, um, a little bit of a debounce here with this. I have not seen this. This is really cool. I can't wait to try this out my own stuff. Um, and so basically after I guess 450 milliseconds, I'm guessing totally guessing on that. Um, we're going to go into the filtering one, which then does filter Pokemons. And then when that's done, we go, we transit back uh, into the idle state, you know, so up there. Oh, actually, I wonder if I can, um, let me, let me go and do something here because this is actually really cool. Uh, okay. So we have machine config. I'm going to pull out all of this down here. Oops, and not and not do whatever I just did there. Okay, and then I'm going to go over here to uh, Googler and say X State Visualizer. Cool. And so the idea about this is uh, you can basically just kind of visualize your machine. You can actually do this as like an extension in the browser. It's I'm just going. Oh, there it is, and there it is, there it is. So cool. Okay, let's make this bigger so y'all can see it. Okay. Although, man, making it bigger makes it look awful. Okay. Uh, no, that's much better. That's much better. So check this out. So this is such so easy to, to visualize what you got going on, right? So we started in that loading state, and then once we're done loading the Pokemon, we go into the idle state, and then when we start typing, we go into the typing state, and then we're uh, after 450 milliseconds, check that out. That actually turns out to be a thing that's built in the X state. Awesome. Uh, we then go into filtering, which is an asynchronous job, I guess. That's interesting. I didn't know. Okay, sure. 
uh, and then we go back into idle. And so it's very clear, very easy to see the discrete, discrete states of the system and, uh, and how they all line up with each other. And in fact, actually, if you actually integrate this uh, into your app, you can actually watch your state machine go through these transitions. It's really cool. Um, in my search, in my circumstance, I, I, we did it for a little bit. And then once we kind of had a sense of what the state machine was, we turned it off. Cause it was like, okay, yeah, it's just taking, it's just eating up CPU. But, but when you're actually trying to get it, get it down, uh, it's super, super handy. So, wow, this is really cool. Um, okay. So is there anything else we can glean from this? So, okay. He, he brought in a new font. I think that's the, I want to say I, there was a point at which it, I, he's gone through a couple of revisions with this. He, um, he sent it to me a couple of days ago and I looked at it and it had a really cool eight bit font. I wonder if that's the font that, uh, is in there and then he's, but he's not using it right now. I'm so bummed. I love that eight bit font. I love the whole eight bit idea because it works well within the Pokemon theme. Uh, okay, cool. So you got, this is another nice thing about Fower is you can do this, like, you know, the, the breakpoint thing. You know, so you can see how many columns you are, what size. That's really cool. Um, let's see, what else does he have? Okay, so that's just a, okay, nice, okay. Ooh, got some fade-ins, doing some keyframe stuff here. That's really nice. Uh, okay, ooh, oh, that's pretty. Look at that. That's neat. So what he's doing there is he is taking his base Pokemon structure and then he's saying, hey, all I need for this card are name, base, and type. So he's pulling out name, base, and type, but he's not actually having to specify any of the types on that because he, those are actively coming out of the Pokemon type. So when Pokemon changes, his code changes along with it. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Love it. Uh, okay, some really cool stuff in here, width at certain sizes, that's great. Uh, yeah, just really nice. Hi Anthony, you're not late. It's okay. Will this video be uploaded? I can't tell Don't worry about it. Of course it's gonna be uploaded. I haven't said anything naughty yet. So we're all good. <laughs> as long as I can keep my mouth in check, this video will be uploaded. And I've been pretty good about that. Um, okay, so let's see, you got a header in there, nothing exciting about that. Okay, looking pretty good. Oh, wait, 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 hold on. Actually, we forgot to actually show like how this, how we integrate with XState. So we got this. How do you send, there we go, here we go, here it is. So we're getting our page context and that's got our XState state in it. And so in the loading state, then he puts up this nice little spinner and then in the idle state, and then that, isn't that just great? It's so declarative. You know, if it's if it matches the idle state, uh, then we say, and we have a, this particular constraint, no no field, no filter data, then we show no results. So just very, very clean, very literate way to, to see what you've got. Um, we should go and see, yeah, ah, here we go. Here's the search input. So this is gonna need to send events to the, uh, to the, the, the machine. So let's see, where are you? Okay. Where's your search input? Where are you hiding? Oh, is it a type on a box? What is that? Oh, it's an input. Oh, okay. Uh, all right. So let's see. I see. So as ref is a search input, how is this working? How is this working? Uh, okay. Huh. Typing. Oh, there it is. So on change handler. But who's, how's that getting from point A to point B? I'm so confused. Uh, on change. Oh, I see. Okay, so his he's calling on change probably from the search input. There it is. That's how it's happening. Okay, cool. All right, so on change is nice. He's got a use callback handler. That's fantastic. So he's getting a keyboard event from our HTML input. And then he's sending a typing message to the state machine. And that's how 
like when you're when you create this machine and then you go and send events to it and then you get back the context which is essentially that the, the derived state of all that uh of all those changes so wow really really cool hey this is some awesome code here so i really heartily encourage you if you're into x state I and mean, this is a really fun little example to kind of riff off of so to you know snag this off of github i'll put the link in the description or whatever but i think you can uh, if you just want to grab it now like this is the github user that you're looking for seven whatever this means 734 probably in my github history uh but jump on over to their repo this is going to be public uh because i was able to grab it um and then you can play around with it and, and try out your own x state stuff if you're into x the combination of x state and react which i certainly am huge huge fan right now uh, just because it reduces complexity phenomenally um okay so that was that one and we got the x8 visualizer and we got uh cheesecakes one let's take a look at one more so you might know him as shadow craze on the server just recently got a new job congratulations shadow craze is it easier than redux is this easier than redux um i think they're trying to solve different things uh, X state in particular is a finite state machine, and that is the way that it models the world, right? You have to be in discrete states, and you have to train, and, and you have to have well-known transitions between between states. Where um, I would say Redux is much more of a just a, a state manager, right? You've got a piece of state or a lot of state, and then you're going to go in, and it's a reducer, right? That's that's the one thing that um, I think people forget that basically it's you know it's a very 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 simple model it's basically your your redux is basically um you can have state you have a state and you've got actions and those go into a reducer function you know into the two spots of a reducer function and out comes new state and you just can't get any really easier than that. And the really cool thing is that's exactly how other things work, like array reduce uh, is exactly that thing, right? You think about, God, my handwriting is horrifying. Um, I mean, if you think about array reduce, right? Array reduce is just, um, you know, the current, the, what do we call it? The accumulator value. And then the next value. And then you give it, some sort of function, right? You know, it's going to be an, an new value plus accumulated value if you want to just add up some numbers and then the initial state, right? And this is a reducer, right? So it is the, the, the smallest piece of, uh, the smallest API and most generic API that you can think of to, take it a current state and then make a new state is a reducer. And so that's why we have reducers in Redux. Anyway, uh, okay. So let's take a look. Uh, this is a Svelte package. So this is, this is a different thing entirely. This is not React, this is Svelte. He is using Fower, last I recall, but let's take a look. Let's go check this out. So uh, of course, a little different, we use Yarn. <laughs> Yarn Dev, not Yarn Dever, Mr. Harrington. Yarn Endeavor. Ooh, look at that. Okay, cool. I wish I knew more about Pokemon because all this would mean great things to me if I understood Pokemon. Uh, I, I, I did that walking around thing for a little bit, but, you know, whatever. Okay, so, uh, yeah, look at that. Okay, so we click on Pokemon. We async load a bunch of images. Uh, feel it. Lauren, okay, I'm going to... I I Orin, uh, feel like in many ways I have app state, but nowadays the key is how to separate server state from client state, and that's why React Query and SWR is trying. Okay, yeah, um, interesting. I 
I'm actually becoming less of an SSR fan over time. Just FYI, I'm, that's just a personal thing. Uh, I'm much more about SSG, having come out of two enormous uh, ser SSR deployments that are both trying to get out of the SSR world. I, um, yeah, the whole like SSR slash you know server state versus local state and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, I have strong opinions about that. Uh, yes, I love the classic look too. So let's see. Uh, yeah, okay. Let's go and filter something here. Bulb. Bulbasaur. Turns out Bulbasaur is in the basic trading game, which is good, I guess. I think that's what I'm, I'm within that set. That's one thing. I don't know it's what set I'm in. There's no visible indication of, of the state. It's very beautiful, though. I'll get that. And lots of animation. I like that. Uh, is there something going on with Pokédex over here? Whoa. Okay. All righty. Somebody's having fun with 3D, uh, 3D transforms there. <laughs> nice. Okay. That's, that's visually intriguing, huh? All right. Very cool. Nicely done, Shadow Craze. I approve. Uh, okay. So let's take a look at, at, at uh, Svelte, assuming that you, you don't know much about it. So Svelte is... Yeah, you just, it's essentially like, boy, you're augmenting a, a page. So your, your basic unit is a page, and then you add on your script, and your script is going to um, work, I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say about this. It's, it's very different in, in terms of like the, the, the framing of how you, you you write your code, right? You know, you're writing it basically as a script tag on the page, which is which is fine. Okay, so we got your your router, and that's what's going to give us the card sets versus the Pokédex. Um, let's see over here. So, okay, let's go to the home page, and yeah, okay. So this is this is starting to be cool, and there's some interesting things here. So let's see, we have a filter, and uh, okay, so. Cardless. I think what's happening here is anytime filter, yeah, like, kind of looks like view. Does it look like view? I mean, view still has like the, it has like a template section. I mean, this is basically, you do away with even the template section. It's like there is just the, there's the script tags, which you don't even need. And then there is the HTML. Um, so there is a cute little thing going on here. This is, if I recall correctly, it's been a while since I've done Svelte, but this is this is reactive, and I think it basically means that if, if you see any changes in any of this stuff, uh, then you rerun this and regenerate card list. So that's that's kind of get that, it's sort of built-in interactivity, or reactivity, I should say. Actually, one thing worth looking at, um, let's zip back to the site for a second, just so you can see like what the what the big deal is here. Like, why, what's the compelling thing? Like, why would you want to use Svelte? Um, yeah, that's a small, comparatively, that's not, that's a little large even by Svelte standards. I wonder why it's actually 1.2 megabytes. Normally, like, Hello World in Svelte is like 4K. So that, this is a little big for Svelte. But, you know, as I say, like 1.2 megs, dev mode, Mm, yeah, okay. It's you know what it probably is? It's probably Fower that's bringing in a lot of code, and it's not uh, tree shaken. But yeah, the, one of the compelling reasons to use Svelte is that like the, the actual compiled size can be incredibly small, given what it is that you're doing. Uh, okay, so for iterators, this is very view-like, actually. Uh, you get your you know, sort of each kind of thing in there, right, like that. Uh, you know, conditional sections. Pretty pretty literate, but again, if you're gonna do that, if you're gonna invert the model so you don't have like it's not JS with HTML, it's HTML with JS in it, then you're gonna need some sort of like macro tagging like this in order to get you know conditionals and, and looping and, and all those constructs that you need to make a page that's dynamic. Uh, okay, what else? So there's a Pokédex, similar kind of idea again. You've got your reactive components up here, more of that. You can actually, I don't think he's, re, he's done it here, but you can reuse a lot of stuff. It's, it's you know, you're not, not constrained in that way. Um, 
And let's see. Oh, let's go take a look and see what that, what's doing that 3D flip thing. I wanna see that. Okay, so, ooh, there we go. Back face visibility, that's what it is. I've actually done a, uh, oops. Good seeing you, Tomas. Um, I've actually done some of this card flipping stuff before. So uh, that, yeah, that's what you get. You get, you know, back face uh, visibility and then you wanna uh, do 3D uh, flipping, but then you have to have a transform in here somewhere. There it is, there's your rotate Y. 180 degrees. You know what? Let's also, let's play with this. Rotate X. 30 degrees. Let's try that. Boogie decks. Is that going to do anything? Um, oh, there you go. Uh -huh. Oh, that's interesting. So we only get it in one direction. Hmm. Okay. There must be another rotate in here for the other direction. Yeah, cool stuff. Why, oh, maybe I need to like, oh, I would need to, I see what it is. Okay, I would need to like unrotate it then. Rotate uh, my, <laughs> this is gonna look awful. There it is. Actually, that doesn't look too bad. Yeah, I mean, if you think about it like a display case, I mean, you kind of would get like a little bit of, of, of skewing like that. Um, yeah, I've done like, you know, poker games and things like that. And you want like the cards to flip and flip over and stuff like that. Um, and it's, it's a very cool effect. I like it. Uh, okay, so that's cool. Again, you can grab this uh, off, the sh off the shelf. Oh, Lottie is so much fun. Uh, we use Lottie in the current uh, gig for doing some really cool kind of like figure eight kind of tracking stuff. So the trick with Lottie, and I forgive me if I if I've if I'm messing this up, but I think you need After Effects, and not that that's a problem for me. I love After Effects. All the videos go through After Effects when I when I produce them, so it's not a problem for me. But um, yeah, I know I, like for some folks, like they don't want to invest in that and it is expensive. So I think you need After Effects in order to export to Lottie, if I'm not, at least the last time I looked. So, but it's phenomenal. In fact, definitely worth going and taking a look since we're just sort of, uh, we're just sort of shooting it today, right? Okay. Yeah, Lottie is very, very cool. Check that out. That's awesome. So what you do is you, wow, <laughs> that is a heck of an intro. Um, you basically animate it in, uh, in After Effects and then you export it from After Effects using their particular, like there's a Lottie Motion plugin or something like that. And it, then they have got player plugins that take that Lottie format and then they'll run it on React or, well, as you can see here, Android, iOS, React Native, Windows, they basically have players that, that take that symbolic format, or I don't, I don't know, maybe it's JSON or something like that, and then interpret it and, and go for it. Um, let's see, so on, on web, let's see. I, maybe it isn't even, maybe it's just generic. That's cool. And then you wrap it uh, in React and that's fine. Yeah, you can make React not freak out when it when it does stuff, when other things do things. Oh, there it is. So yeah, yes, you need you need After Effects, which is how you do the animation, set it all up, and then you install this body moving, and then you export it using their uh, that body moving. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It, it, mm, bah, it's like an animated SVG from JSON, and definitely very cool. And yeah, as I say. Yeah, if you want that kind of thing, if you want like this beautiful, like animated logo for your business or something like that, I mean, look at this. Like, you got like Lottie's playing basketball with its logo or something. It's <laughs> pretty sweet. Um, okay. So, yeah. Uh, okay. Well, that was, you know, that's basically the three uh, submissions that I got. I, I think it's great. I think, yeah, thank you so much for spending your time to go and uh, 
build this stuff. Obviously, this SV, this this felt one was completely new. Um, the one from uh, Cheesecake was basically kind of building on what we had uh, already and reskinning it a little bit. And then Boaz's um, X State based version, which is phenomenal. You should go grab a copy of that uh, and and try it out for yourself. I, I don't know. Do, should I do like an X date? Should I do like no BS X date? I think I should. I'm I'm really. I think it's worth it. Honestly, um, I know David K Piano, the guy who does X date, has done some really fantastic documentation on it. But it's always nice to be able to put kind of a practical spin on it and see if you know if I can. But then again, I'm I I need to spend a little bit more time on my side mastering it. If I didn't know that there was like that 450 millisecond transition thing in there, which is so cool. I'm totally going to use that in my project. Um, then, you know, I probably don't know enough about it yet to actually do a full series on it. Um, okay. And then, you know, so the other ideas were a no BS node, which I thought was really good. Uh, and then let's see, was there any other ideas? Yeah. Okay. Not to, not to like, like, it's just just us, and there's only a few of us in this room. My my initial take on this was, I was thinking uh, no BS GraphQL um, was my next thing, because uh, I think GraphQL is really cool, particularly in how it integrates with. I think it's good, really good with TS. There are some really good, um, yeah. Well, there you go, something for the back end, right? So hey, it's cheesecake. Hey, cheesecake. Um, yeah, something like no, no BS GraphQL, where we talk about how to use the client, uh, or how how to make the, the the request first from the client, and then go build out a server, build out a server first using like a text definition. But then I think there's been, as I recall, about three months ago, there was a really cool new project in the GraphQL space that uh, allowed you to kind of symbolically or or, or uh, use metadata to create your uh, schema, and then it would generate out the type script definitions for you and keep them exactly in sync, which I thought was really cool. Um, well, thank you, Anthony. I appreciate that. Um, I don't know where you work, but I, I would love to meet you and, and meet your principles. Uh, and that, yeah. Um, okay. So yeah, as I say, uh, cheesecake, really good, uh, stuff today. Really nice. Uh, version of that and shadow crazy fantastic awesome as always um svelte version of it and of course boaz 21 with your x state stuff again phenomenal work and so it's great that that you put this out there and then allow people to go and, and grab it and, and and try it out because i think that's actually when people ask me like how do you kind of become a better engineer not that i'm a great engineer but you know whatever read a lot of code, you know, read a lot of other people's code. And so if you want to learn about X-State and learn a lot of stuff, like I just did literally in the watch in the, in just doing this, um, you know, going through somebody like, like, uh, Boaz's code there, um, is really cool because you can learn a lot and, and, and see a lot of stuff that you didn't think or that you thought you'd have to do on your own. Like a, a debounced delay of 450 milliseconds, which I think is long, but whatever. Um, the fact that that's built into X date, that is so cool. Uh, GraphQL code gen. No, it wasn't GraphQL code gen. It was, um, I'll have to go take a look, but I've definitely seen GraphQL code gen. Um, but this was a different one again. Um, I'll have to, it will definitely be in the series. Uh, and it would be kind of later on, uh, because I, I think the sort of still the off the shelf, um, Sort of Apollo server stuff is more is still text based, which I don't think is all that great. But uh, it, it, this gets around that, and and you actually like you define your schema by like creating JavaScript objects, and you say like, okay, here's you know I'm going to give you customers, and here's my resolver for customer, and if you want if if you want their address, then here's a resolver for that. And the really cool thing is that it actually goes and generates like the TypeScript types for you on the fly. Like, okay, customer is going to be a string because you said it is a string in in the the metadata. And so you don't have this issue with like trying to synchronize like the text of the 
of the GraphQL schema that you're pumping into the, uh, the Apollo server, right? It goes and takes that, uh, those object definitions for the GraphQL schema and it creates the exact same input to the Apollo server. So then you can still use the Apollo server. You just get to define your schema in a much, much, much more literate and type safe way. Uh, and I'm surprised I haven't done a video on it, honestly, because I was so blown away by it at the time and it really, like, it was very new. Um, one thing I wish we focused on more when you're going through CS because uh, it's really getting a lot of code base. So I was like, tell me about it, exactly. Uh, oh, you mean like code gen in particular? Um, that's cool, honestly, because my first book was called Code Generation in Action, so that was fun. Uh, cool. Well, hey, thank you all for hanging out. And this is really great. I, I just love that you all spent the time to make some projects and send them in. Um, let's see if I do another project and it kind of lines up like that. We'll see if we can do this again. And, and, and I think even cooler, I mean, this video is going to be uploaded on YouTube, obviously. And so, you know, Boaz and Cheesecake and Shadow Crazy right, they all essentially get to have like free employment or, or free CV, you know, up on, uh, up on YouTube and be like, hey, that was my code and point, you know, potential employer at it. Like, look what I did. So, and hopefully I've shown it off well for them. And there are some really cool stuff on it. Um, all right. Well, thank you all for coming and really appreciate that. Really, it's great to be back on the live stream. All next week, uh, it's going to be more no BSTS. I'm actually on an offsite in Tahoe and hopefully I'll be able to, uh, do some, some video out there and I'll, I'll show you what Tahoe looks like in addition to some more no BSTS for the week following. And, uh, and then whatever we decide to do, ah, oh, please make a course on CSS in depth. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Interesting, my boss, who's a huge CSS guy, would probably be like, you are not qualified to do that. Um, I mean, personally, like, I'm a huge grid guy because grids really work for me, but, uh, you know, like Flexbox, I just can't get my head around. So there's things like that that in CSS. Um, anyway, yeah, maybe, we'll see. I would have to learn a lot, like I'd have to learn a lot with x -Day. Anyway, thank you so much for showing up. And uh, great, this has been really fun. So have a great weekend and I will see you next week and the weeks that follow and very exciting. Uh, which is the best course to learn CSS? Uh, I would, you know, uh, Intertej, uh, try Egghead. If, you, if you're into that sort of thing, if they've got something on CSS, the Egghead does a really, really good job and they're really good with mobile in terms of like their screen sizes and all that sort of stuff. So I, when I tend to learn stuff, I, I if I'm gonna do the video course thing, I learned from Egghead. So, all right. Thank you so much and uh, we'll see you next week.